shit, everybody. You know, the worst yeah. part about it is that I'm not in the picture. Hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> the, worst part, the worst part about the shed is also where I store my tanks of gasoline and the uh, oh. the uh, lawnmower and stuff okay. like that. So I, I smoke in a flammable area. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's really stupid. Yeah. It's really dumb. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> as the wind goes through my <laughs> <laughs> cigarette holder. Yeah. <laughs> what a great audience we have out here today, everybody. Oh, God. Okay, this has to happen. Now I'm going to be stuck on this for the rest of the One show. One day I'm going to walk in, no eyebrows anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm going to have to do a TV review that day. It's not going to go well. Yeah, it's, it could be terrible. But it'll be great for the lounge career because mm-hmm. I will yep. watch that in a second. Hello, everyone. This is Trends with Benefits. This is our weekly Roundtable Tech Podcast where we talk about the trending tech topics of the day and lots of other things. And we have a big show for you today. So we have lots to talk about. We are live on Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, and YouTube, if I remember them all correctly. And we are taking your comments and questions as we broadcast this live. So we want to hear what you think about everything that we're discussing, what your thoughts, your comments are. The question that we have to start off with is talking about streaming music service. So I don't know if you know this, but YouTube... Red is now going to be YouTube Premium, which is going to incorporate YouTube Music and then eventually Google Play Music. And it's very confusing. But that is what's going to be happening. So YouTube Premium is coming. And the question I had is, which streaming music service do you use? Because we've got you know, YouTube Music at this point, Spotify, Apple Music. Somebody mentioned Amazon, which I always forget that Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Amazon Music, Amazon Prime Music. Amazon. Okay, so there's a difference between those two. Yeah, there's and a title. free. There's a free. Then there's and a title. Prime, yes. And title is out there. Keep forgetting Google about Google Play title. Music is still its own independent entity, and that's a, we'll have to get into why that is. Why that is still, still the way, thing and why it shouldn't go away. And some people just use YouTube in general, right? Yep. Just look up videos, right. right. So there's that option yeah. as well. So we want to know what you use and why, and what you think of this. And we've got some other topics we're going to talk about as well. Apple self-driving cars. Uh, you can soon possibly buy the Spot Mini terrifying Boston Dynamics robot dog. You may be able to own one, or your neighbor, which is even scarier, could have one. So that's that's something we're going to discuss as well. Also, we have some special guests here joining us. I'll let them introduce themselves, though. So let's go around, get our cast of characters here. I'm Greg Nibbler, to my right. I am Rick Stella, outdoor editor for Digital Trends. Hello, Rick. And joining us back, it's been a while since, uh, I mean, gosh, several months, actually, before a giant project went through. Let's have you guys introduce yourselves and maybe tell, tell everybody out there who doesn't know what you do. <laughs> and neither One, of them want to talk, but that's on to yeah. They're so gracious. Uh, Chris yeah. Regis with Touch of Bass. Ezra Semino Hurt also with Touch of Bass. Touch of Bass. And guys, if you're watching live right now, you can kind of see the speaker in the background. It looks like there's a painting sitting up there of a boombox. That is a fully functioning, amazing work of art speaker. Like that is, I actually set it up. I think I'm still hooked up to it. Um, it is Fantastic, and we're going to be talking about that here in just a little Super bit. Fun. It's yeah. it's really cool. And there's a whole story behind it, so we're going to get to that as we go through the show today too. And on the end, the whiskey mist, the whiskey mist, who is singing us into the show today? Yeah, earlier. bringing it in old school style. Yeah, we, eventually you do need to be in a smoking jacket for this entire show. Yeah, maybe I, a pipe or a cigar. I think the smoking jacket. I need like the Werther's original grandpa sweater. <laughs> you know, the really yeah, thick yeah. cable sweater with yeah, like, yes the unnaturally large lapels yeah. on it. Um, and yeah, a little thing of butterscotches and an <laughs> ashtray and a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. I think I'll be set. Handing out butterscotch Those are at your desk. Everybody. You should have just brought them. Yeah. I I, 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 we, we should just move this whole party to my office. There you go, kid. Have a butterscotch. <laughs> Calm yourself down. All right. Well, let's, let's get into talking about streaming music here. So with, with this YouTube change, and honestly, YouTube's never been the place that I go to for music. I mean, I'll watch music videos, mm. maybe every now and then. Um, I probably watch This Is uh, this is America, you know, 19,000 times on there, but otherwise, <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, but otherwise, I don't really think of it as my go-to source. I, Spotify is what I kind of went into. I like Spotify, I like the layout, I like how it works, and I haven't really considered a lot of others, but that's what I want to talk about this, is what people are using, and what you think of this YouTube move. The, the one thing I can say right off the bat is YouTube has done a terrible job, Google, Google and YouTube, of marketing this, of figuring out how to organize this. There's been so many different changes, and like we said, there's still Google Play Music, now there's YouTube Music as well, there's YouTube Red, which is now going to be YouTube Premium, which is going to incorporate YouTube Music, and eventually Google Play Music will get go away. 
But that is a lot of different options of for different one names, company right. and a lot of names when it seems like you could just simplify this. From well, the and there's also YouTube TV. And YouTube TV. Thank you. Which is a live TV streaming service that, I mean, uh, it's getting really complicated. That's the problem. It is. Is like, premium going to be the umbrella, though, and everything's going to be below? Getting, or? No, only... F <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. No, it's getting there. Not quite yet. <laughs> from what I can tell... Uh, YouTube Premium will not include YouTube TV, the live TV streaming oh, okay. stuff. So it'll include, um, well, first of all, let's talk about what they are now. YouTube yep. Music is the way that um, is, is getting its own app. Um, right. And so it's going to be more like just searching for music. It's going to, yeah. there's not going to be video involved. And so it's going to act more like the music streaming services that you're used to from Apple Music and Spotify and Tidal. Um, <clears throat> YouTube Red allowed you to watch the videos ad free. Um, and got you access to their exclusive content. Cobra Kai is the big one right now. Cobra Kai, which I you have know, heard is really good. Us. Yeah, I hear it's great. You can watch the first two episodes for free, but after that, you need to have a YouTube Red subscription to access it. And Red, yeah. like I said, it eliminates commercials, so you can watch whatever you want to on YouTube without having to go through any ads. Hmm. Um, YouTube Premium is trying to bring those two things together. Um, but the big move is really that YouTube Music is... is trying to be more like a normal music streaming service. Yeah. And um, and nobody's really sure what's going to happen to Google Play Music. Alphabet, the parent company, owns both of them, but they're still supposedly different entities, you know. Which is silly. I it mean, is. I mean, it really is at this point for an organization like that not to have it all streamlined into one thing. I mean, they're so A, they're paying separately for both of those. Just no. as a company, right? So that's the other thing. It For a while there... Uh, if you had a Google Play subscription, I think this is still the case. If you have a Google Play Music subscription, you get automatic access to YouTube uh, Red, or is it YouTube Music? I can't remember. But it, yeah, that's, it is, and that's why it's confusing. But, but, yeah, nobody that's really knows what you get. And vice versa. If you have YouTube Red, then you've got um, a subscription to Google Play Music part and parcel. Mm -hmm. um, the big news is if you just want to get in for the lower price, it's about all about to go up. Uh, by about two bucks. So uh, YouTube Music will be ten bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And then if you want to bump it to YouTube Premium, then it's another two dollars on top of that. So a total of twelve. But it's divorcing the video from the music. That's the, the that's the big takeaway here. Right. They're divorce, divorcing video from music. And then Google Play Music is is still out in the wind. Nobody understands why you would have both. Uh, but the thing about Google Play Music is that. Um, even with their free tier, you can upload, like, I've got 500 songs uh, of my own stuff that right. they don't have available for streaming. It's just really obscure jazz shit um, and, and a few other things. Right. <laughs> Some bootleg. That's going to be the name of the that. album, by the way, Caleb's album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really obscure jazz shit by Caleb Dennison. <laughs> Everybody's going to buy it. Um, but, <laughs> but it's going to be like industry standards, not even that obscure. It's going to be like just tunes everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to be like the O'Reilly's Auto Parts jingle, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Which everybody loves I guess that. It's kind of obscure, but hey, Caleb's singing it. Right. <laughs> uh, with a jazzy beat. But, right. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand what they're doing, why they're doing it. Um, I do understand why they want to be more competitive in the music streaming space. That makes sense. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's weird for us because I don't think anybody here, anybody use YouTube, like no. Red or Music or whatever? No. Nick Hastings penned an op ed two, three weeks ago that did really well, hit on Reddit, mm -hmm. uh, got a lot of attention, and he's and it, it was basically why I choose YouTube Music and Google Play Music over Spotify. And the big reason is that there's a bunch of like mixtapes and um, underground uh, R&B and rap stuff on okay. there that you just can't get from Spotify. And the way you can put it together and kind of curate it and, and customize your listening experience for a guy like him, and there's lots of people out there just like right. Nick. It makes more sense to, to go that route. Um, so he would rather do that and curate it himself than using something like Discover Weekly or having Spotify curate some of it. Well, YouTube him, Music or? is going to start doing uh, customized playlists okay. based on your listening habits. So That's one of the changes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it, it really it's about access to content that sure. Spotify doesn't have right. and Apple Music doesn't have. Yeah. Well, let's take a look here at some of the comments, and I want to hear what you two think, too, especially working, you know, at least tangentially in the music industry, in a way. I mean, you're making speakers that people are listening to it on. Totally in the music. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> so, um, 
taking a look at this, just some of the comments. Let's see. Google Play Music family subscription is cheaper than Spotify. Okay, so there's one reason, I guess, why people are using that. Uh, uh, Jeremiah says, girlfriend and I have a YouTube music streaming rule. You pick any song in the sidebar. Oh, okay, so that's what they do at home. So they just kind of use that as probably more of a, uh, a game for it. Let's see. I've never used Spotify, Tovar, so, so there's still people that don't use it. Well, Marine uses... Title. What's that? This guy uses Tidal. Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Wayne, Wayne uses Tidal for the quality of the music and Spotify for finding new music. And that's true. If you do want quality, I guess Tidal probably still is the premier. Tidal sounds the best. If you're, yeah, if, you're, if yep. you want the highest end audio coming out of there. Um, let's see. Alan says, better deal with Google Play Music. You get YouTube Red free. So maybe you still get YouTube Red with Google Play Music. Is that For now. For yes. now. Okay. I, uh, don't, I don't know that that's going to be the case once they drop Red and, and start doing okay. uh, YouTube Music and YouTube Premium. What's okay. the audio quality going to be like for YouTube? Because I know if you're watching, if you're just streaming music videos, the quality is going to be, is it worse than Spotify and Apple it, Music? Uh, a lot of times it is. Uh -huh. So if, the, if you're relying on uh, an upload that, mm -hmm. you know, Jack in Ohio put right. up on there. You right. don't know what that's like, how compressed it was when he saved it, yeah. or if he ripped a, a, a vinyl record and put that up there. You know, you could end up listening to the vinyl record version, and even then, how much did he compress it? Did he upload right. it at one? Uh, 20 kbps or 180 or 320 like right. Sp Spotify tops out at 320 uh, sort of mp3 style title is up to si CD quality 16 uh, 16 bit 24 kilohertz or whatever I'm I'm, I'm so brain dead right now. That's I'm, okay. I'm if an expert at this, this shit. Yeah. I'm if an expert. If you want to see the specifics, you can <laughs> find it at digitaltrends.com. <laughs> but um, yeah, but Tidal is the best sounding one. Spotify seems to have the widest range of music out there. Apple Music is somewhere in, the, in between. Their quality which, isn't as good. And, and Apple Music is picking up the most subscribers, 50, though. 50 million subscribers yeah. is what Tim Cook said like they're up to now. Uh, as far as percentage of people going. I and mean, Apple as a company is, is Yeah, Apple as a company is totally on solid footing, yeah. whereas yeah. Spotify has been bleeding right. millions of dollars ever since its existence. It Apple. hasn't figured out how to be profitable, yeah. and it doesn't pay its artists jack crap. Yeah. I mean, like, cents on the play. And that is true. Yeah. Well, an Apple can bleed billions, and it wouldn't matter to them. Like, yeah. They could do that so for years. It makes sense for them to do something like right, that. Right, and just know? to shut somebody else down. For years. So, yeah. so, you two, when you're, what do you think of this? Like, A, I guess, which music service do you use? Do you care? No, <laughs> curating music is a lot of work, and so the, I'm constantly impressed with my Spotify algorithm, so, mm -hmm. like, Discover Weekly and my daily playlists, I don't ever skip. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Save this. Like, mm -hmm. that's how I'm yep. always finding things. Mm -hmm. So, the listening experience, as far as quality goes, you know, it's passive listening. So, it's active list or like being doing things. So, I'm never right. like super concerned with quality. It's right. more about song selection versus hearing then, something new or having them curate that, it. Yeah. Because it really is an enormous amount of work to curate a music library. Right. Do you so pay for a Spotify subscription or just oh, use the free version? No, I, yeah, I have the family subscription so that when my yeah. wife at work hits play on something or my daughter hits play on something, it doesn't... We don't have I had that problem yeah. too, yeah, so oh, I totally so do like the Apple thing. Music will mm -hmm. kick you off. If yeah, you immediately paid right. for everyone to have their own leave me alone yeah right <laughs> so important yeah yeah it really is the family plans are really really important um because i know there are a lot of people out there that you know want to share this have one bill you know less less money being spent and need to be able right. to stream at the same time yeah. we do i deal with that now my mom my daughter myself all on and uh my girlfriend all on the same account it's like mm -hmm. five yeah. users up to five, five yeah up to five yeah. plus yeah. you get and the higher quality uh sound quality if you want it you can get the, oh, really? the 320 kbps yeah just go oh, to your yeah. settings that's and, all included and click that it uh, uses more data so if you're like actually burning data when you listen to music you may not want to but most right like t-mobile doesn't count spotify against your data anyway uh, or if you have an unlimited data plan it doesn't right. matter you right. know who uses t-mobile I do. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's because it's because when I travel out of the country, my phone always works and there's no roaming charges. You know what I mean? So it's bomb for that. I have to have that if I go to certain European countries or whatever. But yeah, um, but yeah I think, um, I mean, to your quality versus convenience argument, right. like, I'm an audiophile guy and I, you know, always demand the best. No, I don't always demand the best. Like Spotify, I use 80% of the time and 20% of the time if I'm like reviewing headphones or reviewing speakers or something just for the convenience of streaming rather than pulling out a CD or something like that, I'll pull out Tidal. Yeah. But Spotify is where it's at for me, um, even though I hate the fact that I'm playing into this underpayment of the right. artists and all. Yeah. I want that to be fixed, you know? If, yeah. if, but they have such a good user experience <coughs> and such, like you said, like they 
get all your music together really well. Like, right. It's hard to not use Spotify because yeah. of those things. You know? yeah. And yet they're still not making a profit with everybody using exactly. it. So that, well, just to, public too, right? What if, what if Spotify just disappears, though? One day it just like collapses right. and it can't be there then, anymore. Then what's everybody your, goes to Apple, Apple Music. I know, Apple Ezra cries. Oh, my change. Ezra cries. Ezra breaks down. But what would you go Stop to, though? I, I mean, like if Spotify was gone, what would you use right now with Apple what's available? Probably Apple, Apple. Music. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I would probably start trying Amazon since I already pay for it. Mm -hmm. I'd try Amazon Music. That's, that's, that's a good Whatever point, it is. Just because yeah. rather than it's an extra bill. In this scenario, though, wouldn't Apple buy up the engineers and buy up the people that right. the algorithm and then just basically have Spotify 2.0? Yeah. Because yeah. they're already on the way and they don't have a free tier, so it's actually astounding. Well, right now they pride right. themselves on having human curated playlists and radio shows Offer and stuff like them. that. Uh, Beats yeah, 1 is I cool for will. sure. I think they will. Yeah. Beats yeah. Radio is yeah. cool for some people. And Zane Lowe does like, he drops like uh, new songs, but other. Uh, I guess Tidal is probably the one that does some new stuff sometimes too but Beats 1 gets like new music when other people don't right away Although even though it shows up on Spotify quickly afterwards but yeah. he does like that world record like almost every week or something. there was something coming out with Tidal too and I, you know what I didn't grab the story but they, they've been having some issues of perhaps some faulty uh, numbers Oh, no, there was like yeah, a they were streaming. cooking the books. Cooking the books For a little Con bit. Yeah. Kanye, Kanye and Beyonce is right. Yep, yeah. Kanye, yeah, yeah. And Kanye Rihanna? and Beyonce. They, and maybe Rihanna too. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very clear. There's there were yeah. more more streams supposedly happening of the, of those albums when they dropped than there are title customers. Yeah. So it's, unless somebody's listening to it over and over and over. It was like a professor would have had to have been playing it for like 18 straight hours during lectures yeah. and stuff. And they, like they trace it back to this like one a few random accounts yeah. but like that just doesn't make sense, It's right? complete crap. Yeah. It's it's venturing into that whole payola thing. Right. But in yeah, this but case if it's they your were own service. Well, be, no, you because know, they're, they're blowing pocket. the numbers yeah. to make sure that the artists got paid more. Yeah. And so I, I, it, none of it makes any sense. But they're cannibalizing their own business plans. Yes. Then. Yeah. yeah. It they're just makes no sense just to make them look better when titles still fall. Yeah. Yeah. Dummies. Well, there's a lot to look into with it. And again, Dummies. you know, we started off talking about the YouTube side. We've got to get some other topics, but check all that out at digitaltrends.com and let us know. You know, we're going to keep on going here into the next next couple of things, but keep letting us know. We'll circle back around to this. So with Apple, the other thing that I wanted to bring up with this, and just a couple of news stories before we talk to uh, talk to Ezra and Chris here about uh, Case of Base. We do have this from Apple with self-driving cars, and it's one of those things. What's that? Touch of base. Oh, okay. Touch of base. Oh my God! See, that's right in my ears when you. No, case of base. So that's where. That's the, that's the roots, man. <laughs> that's that's what. Touch of base. I thought it was touch of bass. Touch of bass. Touch of bass. You made the Billy bass. You did the Billy bass thing. Apple has it right next to the Bambi over your bed. You got thirty seconds. Tell me about your bass. I know Apple. Cars. Let's talk about this. So Apple, in case you forgot, is still working on self-driving cars, although they've kind of gotten away from making their own car. They were going to be doing that for a while and now focusing more on using their technology. But I didn't realize, you know, with, with hearing about all the other companies that are working on it, Waymo and, and Lyft and Spotify and Google, or Spotify, God. Uh, yeah. Spotify. <laughs> Spotify. 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 By next year, there uh, there will be Apple cars on the road. This is what they're speculating that they could have this technology in cars by next year. Who's maybe even that? jumping it. Maybe even jumping someone else. Well, uh, if you say Gene Munster, I'll slap a, I'll slap somebody. Oh what? <laughs> Gene Munster. <laughs> I when you say know. Apple Car, I just think of like the Richard Scarry Apple, the actual <laughs> right. Apple Car, you right. know? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, right now they're they have it in. Uh, they're the second largest fleet of self-driving vehicles in Northern California. So that's where they're at right now. Mm -hmm. So they do have cars out there. Right now they're required to have somebody in there. There is a DMV rule, though, that did go into effect on April 2nd where you can apply to have self-driving cars on roads without a driver in there. Uh, mm -hmm. But nobody's passed the test yet, and nobody's actually, I think only one, one company has actually applied because with all of the accidents that have occurred, it's the likelihood of them giving a stamp of approval for that. All it's of the pretty slim. Like fifteen ever. Yeah, right? but I mean, it's still enough. I know. For I'm just. I know. Opinion. I'm just saying. It's just funny. Do Do we expect Apple to roll out their self driving stuff and have it be just like immaculate or well, as it's, clunky it's as something Apple, like Uber? But the, and, uh, I won't even use Apple Maps. Oh, yeah, I was going to say <laughs> when, when has Apple, Apple rolled say, out? Yeah. It's not clunky. No, right. right. Not a chance. Well, it's. I Hopefully mean, hopefully they're using Google Map technology. <laughs> for their, <laughs> for their I, they tell me that. I'll, 
I'll get in one. Yeah, yeah. just try it out. Yeah, yeah, try it out. Well, and right now there's also a Chinese ride sharing company called uh, Didi Chuxing, which I, I was unaware of them. Apparently, they're the big ones in China. They are going to be testing out their own driverless car mm. technology in California as well. Whoa, what? So yes. I'm probably <laughs> saying it wrong. Out across the ocean, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, California's like a haven for this. Hasn't Google Cal- logged like 10 billion miles? Some, some crazy Something large ridiculous. number of yeah. autonomous cars like driven around for Google, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right now there are 55 Apple cars that are on the hmm. on the road, and uh, let's see, GM has 104 that are operating in the in the state right now. But there's and apparently though. Yeah, and Google has thousands more on order. So there's everybody's trying to do it, but it's just the idea of an Apple car. Like, would you want to ride in an Apple car? Just, just make it simple as that. Nope. Yeah, or would you rather ride in a Google? I, I would Google ride car. in any autonomous car that I didn't have to drive and I could sit. And do so it doesn't it matter to you what it no, is. No, I really don't care. Okay, so you really were, that you just don't of, care about people, do you? No, I just pedestrians. They mean nothing to you. I, I think that <laughs> he's just giving me like run them down. <laughs> I think that the odds of that car hitting someone are probably, you know, not as good as some dipshit yeah. driving a car. That's right? brilliant, People man. are <laughs> terrible yeah. drivers. Or yeah. Yeah. Period. I mean, I'm sure you're an excellent driver, Ezra, but... The odds actually go down, you know. If, yeah, right, the more right, autonomous, right. autonomous vehicles we have on the road, the less human error is introduced, the more likely it's going to be a safer technology overall. Unless, you know, I mean, everybody's thinking back to the, what happened in Arizona, that mm-hmm. tragic yeah. accident that right. went down. And that's, we're, we're looking at there Tesla There was someone failing. in the car, though, at that time. Right? Yeah. Was, yeah. And they weren't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. well, and, I, and Rick, you're right. You know, it hasn't been that many, but that kind of publicity, one, will go a long way to set right. it back. Sure. You know, public trust and something like that. But is it compared yeah. to how many autonomous cars are on the road? Yeah, how much is the percentage? Right. small. Yeah. But I think for it to get over that hump to where it's, like, largely accepted by the public, it's going to be a while. And I'm taking a look here, you know, just in the comments that are coming through. Um, Tovar said, Google Maps has attempted to drive me off of a cliff, so no. <laughs> uh, Vicky says, I wouldn't ride in any car without a real driver. Uh, so yeah, there, I mean, there's, Let's there's be still fair, a lot you of... Know, the barrier like, for entry is a lot higher, because you have to, you, like, I don't know, you're right. not just going to blindly put people's like lives at risk. You assume that everyone that drives a car is going to drive within their means. Like You would just assume that there's going to be no fatalities, but there just are, right? Right. This, there has to be like hard evidence that you've done, like I don't know, that the software would allow it to be no deaths. You right. Know? And I mean, and the science behind it, you know, statistically, yeah, we'd probably all be safer if we were in autonomous There was an cars. article that said, I'm sorry, Caleb, one more thing, that said one autonomous car could stop like traffic jams you see on the highways. One autonomous car could like influence that to where there wouldn't be as bad of traffic mm-hmm. jams during yep. like, rush hour. That accordion effect drives me right. nuts. Because I don't, <clears throat> I don't allow it to happen yeah. between me and the car in front of me. Like I'm not tailgating them, but I'm also not allowing for a certain amount of space to to, to happen. Yep. Like yeah. I'm I'm moving with the flow of traffic, and as we speed up, I let I allow for there to be a greater uh, distance between us for safety concerns. Yeah. But like the people just don't, they're not diligent about their driving. It's mm-hmm. a passive experience for them in a lot of ways. And so that's accordion effect, which you see happening on the freeways, choking up right. freeways. Also, the the lane merging, yeah. um, where people don't do the zipper thing. They don't f- go all the way out on the, the lane the way they should to allow yeah. that natural... They slow you, down you and get off at the end of the on-ramp. We could go off on this for a while, because we, we live in Portland, Oregon, and it is the land of terrible drivers. It is. So we, it we really is. Here. It's really But bad. I do want to make one okay. clarifying point before okay. we move on uh, to touch of base. We got one other thing. Make so the we, case for touch base. Uh, <laughs> is that we joke about you know Apple Maps and, and Google Maps driving people off of cliffs and whatnot, but that's not the technology at work here. LiDAR is a big part of it. It's using laser right. vision technology to actually see what's happening in real time, and that's how it knows where it's going. It's using that along with maps of the road. And talking to um, other cars, right? Talking yeah. to other cars, yeah. coordinating. I yeah. mean, the technology, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And as soon as they iron out the kinks, I think you know we're all going to be safer, and we're going to get to where we want to go. Uh, faster, you know. Right. Just Absolutely, don't yeah. don't take my little red convertible away from me ever, 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 because I'm not giving it up. <laughs> He's got I a cool I, one I, too. I like it's driving. Yeah, yeah. I like, like driving, and I don't want. It's to top it down up. weather almost too. Yeah. All right. We yep. need to get to one other topic here, and then we can start talking about a touch of base. And that is <laughs> right after this. I want to bring up just one other thing that I found fascinating this week. Um, you know, we're every, it seems like every month or so we get a new video from Boston Dynamics that scares the hell out of everyone. 
And recently we got the Spot Mini Robot Dog. And if you haven't seen the video, you can go to Digital Trends and take a look at it. If you're watching live, you can see it right now. It's one of the uh, videos showcases this dog that looks straight out of the Metalhead. I think it was Metalhead, yeah, Metalhead episode yeah. of Black Mirror. Yep. And uh, it's got a long, weird arm mouth thing that opens a door, so it's other robot terrifying dog bites. I will eat through. you now. Yeah. Go through, pal. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of horrifying, but also pretty amazing at the same time. Well, these, Boston Dynamics is finally going to make these available for the public. So they're saying uh, 2019 you, <laughs> commercial availability is scheduled uh, scheduled for 2019 as per an announcement uh, by Mark Raybert, who's the founder. And so you're going to be able to buy these. They're saying that these could go into, they're saying, think about how you could use these in offices or um, spaces more accessible for business applications. Yeah, how do you? Yeah, I'm right. confused. I don't know how you're going <laughs> to use it. Take these TPS exactly. reports over to Robin in yeah. accounting. Robotic know. companion animal. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! For him, right? Will we be allowed to fly <laughs> with them on suit. Delta or yeah. United? Leopard suit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's my yeah. for I'm, robot. Yeah. I'm doing the outfits for them. It's like, hey, Greg, who's on the podcast this week? Got uh, three robots? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, I probably be better than so those guys from Touch of Base. Will people bring these onto airplanes? Is yeah, like, that's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah your new uh, comfort do- comfort robot, robot dog comfort fights. Pet. Yeah. definitely going to be a thing. Your neighbor gets one, oh, you yeah. get one, and then you pit them against each other. It's entertainment. I would probably go watch that neighborhood fight. The yeah. best and part about that video is that it takes them so long to open the door. So if they were actually coming after you, you're just like, you, you <laughs> hold, good in there? You good? Hold, yeah, right. hold, one yeah. second, I'm opening this door. <laughs> yeah, they really overcomplicated the issue. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, now you're going to be able to purchase one apparently coming out next year. So you can take a look at that. All right, let's get to talking about a touch of base. So maybe we should just get, um, you know, really quick, like the origin story, because we had you on and you can go back and listen to this podcast. Um, gosh, what, last September, I think, or it was right when you were in the process of getting ready to go to China, I think. Yes. The- yeah, yeah. Well, it has been that long, has it? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, it was the, uh, we were conceiving of it. We got back from China in April. Incredible experience. Got to, you know, so we'd worked with this factory, Microlab, uh, Electronics and what for like a year? Yeah, developed for a year. Working and with their team, we're doing uh, an introductory run of a thousand units. And, uh, and let's explain what the unit is here, just for anybody listening to the podcast who doesn't know. T- tell me about your unit. Tell me about the <laughs> unit, please. Yeah. I mean, it is a high quality photograph of a vintage boombox from our collection that we've printed and mounted in frame, so it's like a piece of art. And then behind that is a shadow box that conceals. Uh, digital amplifier, and then in the photograph where the speakers are on the boombox, we've cleverly placed real speakers, so it seamlessly is, we call it audio art, but it's a streaming Bluetooth uh, stereo speaker that hangs on your wall and completely... Yeah, it looks great, like in the photo we have here, I mean, it looks awesome. We've got a photo that we're showing here, and actually, if you're watching live, there's one, it's right back here behind us as well. We had one in the office. Was this the one that we've had in the office for a while? This is the one, I just took it out of the entertainment. Yeah, this one just came in. Okay, because you had one for a few months, right? Yeah, we were looking at one of the prototypes when it was kind of still in development, which I can't believe how long it's been. I went back... Is that over a year? It's over a year, yeah. It was like March of 2017 when I put out that video, I think. Wow. And That long ago, wow, okay. Yeah. So we were working with another time. engineer sure. to try to develop the the product and the actual manufacturing of it. It's a daunting yeah. task oh, to bet. take an idea and be like, okay, right? How do we make thousands of these? And it's <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, last time we talked, we talked about <clears throat> avoiding the pitfalls that uh, so many on Kickstarter and Indiegogo mm. do, where they gather a bunch of money and then they squander it away because they don't know how to work with uh, Chinese manufacturing companies and. Right. Uh, the next thing they know, they're they're in over their head, and then some of them are just like scurrying away and cowering in the shadows because right. they can't, they don't have an answer for these people. They're like, we screwed up, we did a poor job, even though we swore up and down right. that we knew what we were doing. Mm-hmm. They didn't, and they. So what I love about what you guys is that you took your time, you went through the necessary steps. Um, you got everything refined, took the time to think about all the things that you didn't know to think about, and right. then you got it implemented. And the product feels very finished, very um, well-polished and finalized. And um, and it works great. You know, I'm 
<clears throat> I'm the I'm the target audience for this kind of thing. Right. I, I come from the '80s. Like uh, I got a boombox when I was like 10, and it was a really big deal to me. You know, with the Dire Straits Brothers in Arms cassette. You know, and and uh, <laughs> it was a big deal back in those days. And um, and so like it speaks to me. Plus, it's just retro vintage vibe is is really happening these it's, days. It's a really really cool <clears throat> product. I mean, I just posted a picture of it earlier today on my Facebook page because I, I was I I hooked it up in here. I was like, well, I gotta try this out. While yeah. I'm here. And, yeah uh, and yeah, there's already just every all of my friends that are probably around the same age are like, yep, want it, want it, want it. Yeah, get, <laughs> get it. yourself a turntable. Yeah. Mount yeah. this above it on the wall. You need a little stand it's... for your turntable. Mount this up on the wall. You could even mount your turntable oh, on the wall if you yeah. wanted to. Run the cord up to the uh, uh, up underneath the frame, and mm -hmm. you've got yourself. Vinyl and Spotify, Apple Music, Title, Google right. Play, YouTube Red, YouTube Premium, YouTube, Pandora. full circle, right. YouTube, you know what Dubai, yeah. whatever. Like you can, you can hook it all up. Google Play. Well, okay. yeah, uh, all of that stuff. A couple of quick questions, like with the, you know, since you were going to China, you know, when we last talked, yeah. how long did it take going back and forth to get this to be where you wanted it? Well, initially, we weren't sure if the manufacturers were going to be able to deliver the. Uh, to our expectations and uh -huh. hit our price point because we didn't want garbage. That was the main thing is right. if we can't deliver this and be proud of it, we just it's not worth doing. You know, we didn't want to fool anyone. Mm -hmm. And so it was ultimately finding this company to work with that we later found out is the company that manufactures everything for Klipsch, Alta Glancing, JBL. You know, we're like, oh, well, you guys they know, know make sound. Yeah. really yeah. nice things and really nice finishes. And, you know, they of course didn't have a frame supplier or the high quality like artwork print supplier but they really fought for us and we'd go back and forth they'd send us samples we'd revise we'd work with our engineers and we 100 percent trusted them on all the technical audio stuff and what we just really pressed them on was uh image quality finishes because it is also a piece of art and right so it was a and the fact that they were so cooperative and really excited because they see a million little things, you right. know, they generate everything that's in Best Buy around Christmas, but to have a thousand of these go come through their assembly line, everyone in the factory was excited. And so it was like... That's a sweet vote of confidence right there. Yeah, yeah. They don't need, let's, let's be honest, they don't need your business. You know what no. I mean? A thousand of these things is not is a drop in their massive bucket. Absolutely. So yeah. they're obviously stoked to do it if they're that into it and they're like working with you guys that hard and like, we want your business, we want to do right. this thing. They probably see something uh, to this in the future. Yeah, I mean, our was, production yeah. line was right next to Alltech Lansing line. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the same quality product, the same attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spent, what, a year developing it with them, just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. we started doing it, I started with him last year, we were working on with another engineer just trying to figure out what the shadow box looked like. Mm -hmm. right. Like going through injection molding, plastics, everything else, just to try to figure out how to actually make the thing perform and get the price point down to where we wanted it. And when we teamed up with Microlab, they brought their experience and really helped streamline our process. They probably cut a year off our yeah. wow. development. Because it's, it's, right. it's a legit so speaker. Valuable. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. amazing. The shadow box is not and just something that hides stuff. It's the cabinet. It's, it's the resonance. The resonance yeah. uh, chamber for yeah. the large six and a half inch drivers that mm -hmm. it uses. And um, how much bass you actually get out of it. It has right. a lot to do with how you enclose those speakers. And, um, and it does. It has great bass extension. It definitely can fill your room. It gets nice and loud without a bunch of distortion. Right. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a killing product. I love it. I can't wait to have one in my house. Yeah, I, I feel the exact same way. Like after <laughs> what a around conversation this afternoon, started like, too. Yeah. I want to have parties just so people can come over and exactly. Like, totally, you know what I mean? Yeah, just pretend. Oh, this. Oh, oh I don't uh, know. this old thing. Yeah. I actually know it's a brand new thing. Check it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it is so cool. And, and yeah. like you said, you know, it's it's not only like a functioning, um, you know, great speaker, but the piece of art side of it. Like you're getting two in one, and that's a, that's a lot to accomplish and bring those two together and have it to your satisfaction. So, um, you got a thousand. That was a thousand for this first run. That you was, know, all that this work, the, you've got them. That was the, we want to be able to do variants, but we want to use this as, and get feedback from people as far mm -hmm. as uh, different print styles. So we have one print style, but we have, you know, eight or nine on deck. Uh, yeah. And they're all photographs from a local Portland photographer of our collection of actual boom boxes. So it's not like, um, and then, you know, frame styles, but they need to be out there before we can get real feedback. Right, and before you can start investing in a bunch of different kinds. Revisions, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so the idea is just, 
again, like we did the first batch, take all that information, try and make it better, and then release, you know, do three varieties of three to 5,000, and then just, you know, slowly get them out there to everybody. Exactly. It's like, yeah. we're not in a rush. We want to do this correctly. It's a cool thing. And so it's just like, try and do it right once instead of wrong seven times. I think it that's a great... Better, it sounds better than the actual boom boxes of the day. Oh, yeah. Right. Way yeah. better than those boom boxes. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it doesn't take 10 D cell batteries to run it and <laughs> yeah. is therefore not and, 35 and, and, pounds. And you can still hold that thing, right? <laughs> it's still yeah. hold oh, yeah. it around. Like, do whatever you want to do. It doesn't yeah. have battery power, so you just be pretending that you're there. But it's <laughs> fine. Still it's look fine. Look you can still hold it. Yeah. 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 Photo op. Yeah, still, exactly. looks cool. still looks cool. Still looks cool. Well, where where can people go to find out more information? Where can they oh. place an order? How does this all work? So right now, a touch of base dot com, a t o u c h o f b a s s dot com. Not and best. There's a landing page. <laughs> there's actually a link there. So uh, for pre sale, we are going to do uh, starting next week, fifty units at like thirty five percent off for. <clears throat> We're calling it friends and family, but it's anyone that can get in there and do it. Um, and then it's going to fire off through Touch of Modern for Memorial Day flash sale and Amazon. And cool. so it'll be, uh, right now it's, the MSRP is 349 but we're going to have a lot of sales, a lot of things happening. And so, you know, the goal is about 300 bucks, free two-day shipping, and just how many can we... Yeah, so like a nice out. Bluetooth speaker, that's what you could expect to pay anyways, plus yeah, you're getting yeah. a work of art, too. So like that's, that's cool. Something a fraction so cool. of the size that yeah. doesn't sound as big or, or as Or look good. as cool as that. Like, no, yeah. it looks cool. Like, <clears throat> no, it's and, great. And if you're listening to the podcast, you know, I suggest going there yeah. just to take a look at this, at touchofbase.com. And it's just, it's a, it's a really cool achievement, you know, knowing how much work you guys put into this and getting to this point. Because there's lots of people out there who have ideas for products or have tried Kickstarters, like Caleb said, you know, try it and then just fail at the end or it's you know it's it's really easy to fail at this stuff and to make it all the way through this so easy to i'm fail. sure you know I yeah. it, all the it time. is <laughs> i mean it's Part there's of success, so many right? pitfalls in that yeah. so uh making it through to this end you know congratulations seriously you guys should be Thanks. really proud yeah. of this yeah, yeah. No, and, only uh, in portland man yeah <laughs> this could only be born in a place that has a dude in a kilt riding a unicycle with yeah. a darth vader mask on right playing sometimes a backpipe sometimes yeah. trying to shoot out of those backpipes <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So. I know him. We can get him yeah. on the show, yeah. too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a picture with one of these. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much. So, uh, touchabase.com. You can check that out. And, uh, and of course, at digitaltrends.com. I think we have, do we have a review up or there's articles? We're going to be doing a feature video on okay, it. Okay, feature uh, video. Talking about it. Um, a lot of what you learned if you watched uh, or listened to today's podcast mm -hmm. is, is what's going to be in that video. Um, cool. And some prior coverage. <laughs> Did we ever end up doing anything with it? Or was it? Yeah. We, yeah. we produced a video on this, sort of yeah. a preview. This yeah. thing is coming. But now it's a finished product cool. um, you can buy it and uh, and you know a lot of tweaks have been made uh, not just to the design but also the uh, the sound uh, mm -hmm. characteristics it, it d definitely sounds a little bit different definitely better than uh, the previous version when you know it was get, kind of still getting mocked up so right. yeah we're definitely gonna get some of that um, out of there out real soon cool so, all right, we'll check all that out right there. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is, <laughs> this is Trends with Benefits. Dude, this is our uh, weekly podcast here at Digital Trends, and we do appreciate everybody tuning into this. But hit that subscribe button wherever you get podcasts. Make sure you hit subscribe, leave us a review, and we'll make sure that you get a new episode every week tomorrow between the streams, new time, live at noon. We're going to be talking about Solo and Deadpool 2 and all that stuff. So tune into that as well, and we will see you next week with another episode. A touch of base. A touch of base. I know, it's just <laughs> right in my ears, Tim. <laughs>